Welcome to my seventh video on proofs in real analysis. It's also the fifth video on doing what I called fundamental inequalities. I'm proving these things. And this one's kind of a biggie. It's even got a name. It's called the triangle inequality. Though for the real number system, it's not really clear why it's called the triangle inequality. You would only see why it's called the triangle inequality when you consider higher dimensions, which I might do at some point. Okay, but here is the statement. If you got two arbitrary real, num real numbers, positive, negative, zero, doesn't matter. Then the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. And before I get into the proof, I should comment that this also implies that the absolute value of a minus b, which is the same as the absolute value of a plus negative b, is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of negative b, which by properties of absolute value, the absolute value of negative b, the opposite of b, is the same as the absolute value of b itself. So you can also say something similar for the absolute value of the difference of two real numbers. All right, before we can prove this, we need to first really define what we mean by the absolute value of a real number. And we also need to mention some lemmas, some simpler facts that are going to make it convenient for us to prove what we want to prove here, the triangle inequality, fairly quickly. First, we want to define, for an arbitrary real number a, what does its absolute value equal? Well, you can write it as a piecewise formula. And some people have a little difficulty with this, but if you think about it carefully, it really does make sense. If a happens to be greater than or equal to 0, then the absolute value of a is a. The absolute value of 5, for example, is 5. This is true even if a is equal to 0, the absolute value of 0 is 0. Hopefully you know this. If you don't, then you're being introduced to it. And on the other hand, if a is a negative number, like negative 5, the absolute value of negative 5, I hope you know, is the distance from negative 5 to, the, to uh, 0, which is positive 5, which is really the additive inverse, or negative, of 5 negative a, the additive inverse of a, the opposite of a, is positive when a is negative. And so the absolute value of a equals the opposite of a, negative a, when a is negative. It's a bit confusing for people, but it really does make sense, okay? And if it's still not quite making sense to you, try more examples. All right, what are these lemmas? The first lemma we're going to need, call it lemma one, is that for any real number, this upside down a means for all, for all real numbers a, ele a element of the set of real numbers, you can say that a is between uh, the negative of the absolute value of a and the absolute value of a itself. You can write it like this. Okay, that should make sense. I will show you a little proof of this, or how to think about the proof at the end of the video. I'm just going to accept this at the moment as one of three lemmas that I use to do the proof of the triangle inequality. But again, it's, it should make good sense to you that that's true. You can try examples, though again, examples are not proofs. Lemma two is, given any four real numbers, you might wonder why do I have four real numbers? I'll, I'll get to that when I do the proof. Given any four real numbers, let's call them u, v, x, and y. If uh, you assume that u is less than or equal to x and v is less than or equal to y, then u plus v is less than or equal to x plus y, which again should make good sense. Okay. Again, at the end of the video, I will briefly talk about the proof of this, but that should make good sense. The third lemma starts this way. Suppose you got a non-negative real number. This is a real number here. That's the implicit assumption. And you've got an arbitrary real number. So C is a non-negative real number greater than or equal to zero. And A is an arbitrary real number. Then you can write down the following if and only if statement. The absolute value of A is less than or equal to C. IFF is shorthand for if and only if. A is between negative C, the opposite of C, and C itself. IFF, if and only if, means the implication goes both directions. 
If you assume this is true, then that's true. If you assume this is true, then this is true. Lemma three, again, should make good sense to you if you think about examples. It's amazing how many people don't think of using this, though, in various proofs involving absolute value. This is really key to helping you prove things, oftentimes, with absolute values. All right, let's get into the proof now of the triangle inequality, where I will use the definition and these three lemma, lemmas. Again, the word lemma means mathematical fact that is typically fairly easy to prove, but then can be used to prove something more important. Proof. Well, I've got to share with you my little fun notation for the triangle inequality. Uh, this right here. Don't be deceived. That's supposed to be mean triangle inequality, not delta, uh, not equal to. And the end, it's a little confusing that, that way because people might think that's a delta, but it's also confusing in that people look at that and they, they don't think about the fact that the inequality really involves a less than or equal to sign, not a not equal to. Anyway, if you don't mind that, that's my shorthand notation for the triangle inequality. So give me two real numbers. They are arbitrary. This is, this is supposed to be true no matter what A and B are. A and B can be arbitrary real numbers. Well, let's just write this as a, the series of implications that we need. Lemma 1 is going to imply, if I apply to both A and B, two things that A is between the opposite of the absolute value of A and the absolute value of A itself, and B is also between the opposite, opposite of its absolute value and the absolute value of B itself. That's what lemma 1 would uh, imply when you apply it to both the numbers A and B. We can now essentially add these two inequalities and use lemma 2. Let me cover some things over here. Look at these two inequalities. Those two inequalities are analogous to u being less than or equal to x and v being less than or equal to y. This would be the u and the x. This would be the v and the y. Okay. Now you see why I needed four numbers there. That would imply that this plus this would be less than or equal to this plus this. Also, cover these two. If I apply it to these two inequalities with this u, this x, this v, this y, then this plus this will be less than or equal to this plus this. Okay, so when I add these two, I get negative a minus the negative the absolute value of a minus the absolute value of b is less than or equal to a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. And this is the same, if you factor out the negative sign, as the opposite, negative of, in parentheses, the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. All right. Now we can apply lemma 3. Think about it here. What's playing the role of A? The thing that's playing the role of A is the thing in the middle there, A plus B. The thing that's playing the role of C is the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. This is C here. This is negative C over there. I could apply lemma 3 in the right to left direction to say that the absolute value of the thing in the middle is less than or equal to C, which is this thing, the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. And that does it. That's the triangle inequality, QED. The triangle inequality can be generalized to higher dimensions. In higher dimensions, it will be more clear why it's called the triangle inequality. Maybe you'd even want to think about that on your own if you've never thought about it that way. Those proofs in higher dimensions are a little harder. Uh, this is a fairly easy proof in the big scheme of things. I will probably do one of those um, higher dimensional proofs at some point here. I will at some point talk about vectors. Before I end the video, though, let's um, think a little bit why about why these lemmas are true. First, let's focus on lemma one. What you could do to verify this is just think about cases these two cases based on the definition of the absolute value function. I guess it's really in lemma 1 and I guess lemma 3 where the definition of the absolute value function is being used. If A happens to be greater than or equal to 0, thinking about cases here, then the absolute value of A equals itself by definition of the absolute value function. And so uh, we can say that 
this is going to be true. The opposite of the absolute value of a in this case will be the opposite of a, negative a, which since a is greater than or equal to zero, this will be less than or equal to zero, which is less than or equal to a, which is the absolute value of a. So we have a, and I can, I can put a less than or equal to sign there too. If two things are equal, then the things are less than, if a number is equal to another number, then the first number is less than or equal to that second number. They are the, but of course they are also the same there. I do have a being between these two things as I want up here. On the other hand, if a is negative, then the absolute value of a is the opposite of a. And I can say that the opposite of the absolute value of a in this case would actually be a itself which is also less than or equal to a because they are equal. That's going to be, because of my assumption here, less than zero, which is less than negative a. Negative a is going to be positive if a is negative. And this will equal the absolute value of a. So once again, I have a being between the opposite of the absolute value of a and the absolute value of a itself. What about lemma two? It does prove lemma one. Lemma two, give me four numbers satisfying these two properties. I want to show that this property follows. Um, the key thing is to consider the difference x plus y minus in parentheses u plus v. If I can show that's greater than or equal to zero, then I'd be done. I'm going to use these two assumptions and use properties of algebra. Uh, essentially the distributive property and the commutative property. To rewrite this as x minus u plus y minus v. This, by assumption, is greater than or equal to zero. And this, by assumption, is greater than or equal to zero. And I'm taking an axiomatic approach to the real numbers. They are a field and they, uh, they are also something called an ordered field. I'm going to assume that. That can be proved from more basic principles, but I'm assuming it as an axiom. You got two non-negative numbers that are being added together the result is going to be non-negative greater than or equal to zero. Finally, lemma three. Got this C that's greater than or equal to zero and A is an arbitrary thing. This is true, that's an if and only if. If and only if means you have to prove both directions. So the rightward direction, the rightward implication is if you assume this is true, then show that's true. Um, Actually, I'm going to go ahead and write down some impl implications here that go both directions. So I'm actually going to prove things at once here. The absolute value of a being less than or equal to c, based on the definition of the absolute value function, implies that both, since c is now negative, both a and negative a would be less than or equal to c. That would take care of, take care of the case where a is non-negative it would also take care of the case where a itself is negative. I can say because of this, a is less than or equal to c and negative a is less than or equal to c. If a itself is negative though, that would be a positive number. Not negative, I should say. And this is equivalent to this. Multiply both sides of this thing by negative one and you'd get a is greater than or equal to negative c those two things are equivalent. And combining this fact with this fact gives you this statement right there. Negative C is less than or equal to A is less than or equal to C if and only if both this is true and this is true. Okay? So those mean the same thing. It's pretty short proofs for the lemma, lemmas and once you have the lemmas it's a pretty short proof for the triangle inequality.